Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Idea. My name is Dia, and today we are going to do a Friday Reads. So the first book that I want to talk about today is um, My Garden by Mary Russell Mitford. This um, is a quick read very tiny book and it is full of just beautiful beautiful watercolors it is um, written in letters and um, even though it is written in letters it's not always my favorite kind of book uh, an epistolary kind of book is not usually my favorite but this one is because she is an author and her letters read very much like a novel. So she's so good with the descriptions of her flowers and the details of just what's happening in the garden from day to day, week to week, month to month, that it feels very much like she is writing a novel about her garden. So even though it's in letter style, it's not um, a typical epistolary kind of novel or book. So one of the things that I really appreciated about Mary's um, writing is that she uses the common names for the flowers and it's just, it's so lovely. And she also is very much into sharing her flowers, not just on the page, but actually taking cuttings, saving seeds, taking a root um, of a plant and passing it along so that these beautiful things that she's experiencing in her garden can become reality for someone else. And I loved that. One of the things I did not care for was that the illustrator, Pamela Key, um, doesn't pair the, the watercolors or the illustrations, even though they're lovely, they're not paired with whatever flower or whatever time in the garden Mary is discussing in her letter. So like right here, this is like anemone flowers. And there's no mention of anemone in this letter. That was one of the only things I didn't like. I, I just felt like she gives such beautiful, beautiful descriptions, details of them that I would have loved for Pamela to paint what she was talking about. So that's my only qualm, really. But look at these, aren't they absolutely gorgeous? So anyway, this was an A read in spite of that. <laughs> um, and I gave it a 97%. I just loved it. Okay. So the next book that I would like to talk about is The Alcazar. And this is the sequel to uh, The Cerulean, which I had read last month. And this is by Amy Ewing. And um, this one I thought was just as, as good. I, I gave it an A, I gave it a 94%, but um, we get more backstory in this one and a little bit of mystery. So I almost found that I liked it better than the first one, which is odd for a second book. This is the end of the duology. Um, it's very much a, a love and friendship and overcoming kind of book. Um, there are themes of caring for our planet and of kind of sharing the wealth. 
So not hoarding and keeping everything to yourself. Um, and then also the, the theme of kind of not playing it safe, um, but taking risk and putting yourself out there and being able to, to not have regrets in that sense. So, um, it is a YA fantasy in case I didn't tell you that, um, with the Cerulean, it is YA. Um, it was published in 2021, so it's not that old. And, um, I thought it was a really great conclusion to the duology. So, um, I, it does have multiple points of view and they are not difficult to follow. Um, like I said, we get backstory, a little bit of history of both um, the planet and the tethering to, or not the planet so much, the city and the tethering to the earth that um, has happened and why it happens and who knows about it and who doesn't and all of that kind of stuff. Um, some of the storylines did not feel completely believable. Um, and that might be due to the fact that it's YA and it's a little bit science fiction, a little bit fantasy. Um, but I was much, much, much more interested in the alien city than I was like the backstory of what was happening on Earth. So when we would switch, I would find myself almost rushing through the Earth story so that I could get back to the Alien City part. But overall, great read and like I said, great conclusion to the duology and really, really enjoyed this um, little, little series by Amy Ewing. Okay, and then I went on in the Tea Dragon series and read Tea Dragon Festival. And this one has a little bit more of a plot. Um, this one had a little bit of a mystery to it. So um, in this one, we are one of our characters from the first book is out for a bit of a walk and kind of gets lost a little bit and stumbles across a real dragon, a very large one, and doesn't know what to do. And so there's this mystery about who the dragon is and what his story is and, and where he came from and um, what the implications are to their little society. Is it a threat? You know, just those kinds of things. Um, it's very much a book about empathy. It's about overcoming. And it's also very, very much about hope. And it was beautiful. And um, again, it, it was a middle grade book and it was still much more about the art than it was about the actual story. Um, because sometimes we're, we don't even see words. It is a graphic novel. So sometimes we don't even see the words of, we just see characters' faces or characters' reactions or, you know, that kind of thing. And um, it was still very well done though. And so Katie O'Neill has done a great job with this series. Okay, now, we come to The Price of Spring by Daniel Abraham. And this is the last book in the Long Price Quartet. And I am so sad, I'm so sad that this is over for me. Um, I will be rereading it at some point, I can guarantee it. I gave this book a 97% A. Um, could have been a 98% A+. Plus. I, I just, I was very emotional at the end. We have long reaching consequences 
um, of just these very small, intricate, everyday decisions and moments. Um, and we get to watch 45 years from the beginning of the first book, what has happened as a result of this one little moment, this one little decision of one character at the very beginning. He doesn't forget about those things. He doesn't leave them. They're not even things that you would think about, you, that you would think were important. And yet he takes it and he makes it important. He makes it have worth and value, whether it be negative or positive. Um, uh, we still have um, themes of friendship. We still get found family elements in these book, in this book that we've gotten in all three prior. Um, it still has themes of the nature of power, who's worthy to wield that power. Um, we have themes of traditions versus reformation or evolution of those traditions. Um, and it's traditions on every single level. It's on a personal level. It's on a societal level. It's on a cultural level. It's on a world level. Um, so we get those themes still embedded in this story in a way that is completely relatable, completely understandable. Um, and then the, the last thing that I really noticed with this book was that there were some things that, that he made choices about doing in this book that almost made me angry. And, um, and it had to do with kind of atonement. Um, slash redemption um, and how and forgiveness basically and um, and who was worthy of that and who wasn't and just oh it's just it was a powerful powerful end to this quartet so um, Abraham is really good. I'm going to read off of my notes here. Abraham's really good at allowing the reader to see the action, decision, moment of choice, and then the greater impact of it. Um, there's so much heartbreak in this final book. And um, like I said, it's completely believable, completely relatable and realistic. Um, one of the things that I appreciate about these books is that as a reader, we get insight into the characters that the other characters in the book don't necessarily get. And so we can often see who is making mistakes and who is misjudging, and who is um, in error when they're doing something. But the characters don't know that, and it just um, does you in. <laughs> it just, I don't know how else to put it. You just are like, no, stop, don't. So 97, 98%. Um, great, great quartet. Uh, if you have not started reading the Long Price Quartet, do yourself a favor and, and just go do it. It, it does not sound like something that would be completely, utterly fascinating and entrancing. And it is totally that kind of quartet. Okay. 
so the next one is my continuation of Dostoevsky's little short stories um, that I'm reading with Christy Lewis and uh, Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia, uh, Christy Lewis, Dostoevsky in Space, and Tiffany at Beautiful Minutia, and a few other uh, booktubers. I think Victoria might be reading this one from Musical Bookworm. I think uh, Una might join in with us a little bit from the Codex Cantina. Um, I don't know who else, but anyway, yeah, I read Conversations in a Graveyard this last week. Um, it's shorter than the first story, and so uh, it didn't take me hardly any time at all. Um, I gave it an A again. It's a down-on-his-luck writer who um, who stays basically down on his luck until he um, spends the night for some reason in a graveyard and overhears ghosts telling each other stories about their life. And it still made me laugh. It didn't me, like make me laugh until the point of crying like the first one did. Um, still has little morals, little things that Dostoevsky wants you to see past the text to understand. And um, I, I loved it. It was great. Okay, so then I had a book come in at the library that was kind of a, a jump in the line of my holds and they were like you can have this book right now if you if you can read it in you know I think it was like you've got four or five days to read it and I thought well if I set aside well you know a couple of other things that I'm reading then I can do that and so I chose to do that and that was The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah or Abdullah and um, it's the first book in her new trilogy, and it is called the Sand Sea Trilogy. And it's kind of a play off of A Thousand and One Nights, or The Arabian Nights. And um, for a debut novel, I thought it was, it was very good. It's um, YA, and it does read a little bit young. Uh, but I was highly entertained. I thought it was so, so good. So it is an orphan girl who is, what's her name? Luli, Luli. And she is orphaned due to um, the fact that there are thieves that are trying to steal something from her little um, camp. Um, because she's like Bedouin and so there's thieves that are trying to steal something from her people and end up burning the entire camp down and she is rescued by a djinn and that djinn then basically raises her and so when we join her story she is um, on the verge of basically becoming a woman and she um, has become a a dealer in relics which are um, gin charmed object objects <laughs> objects <laughs> and she um, that's what she believes anyway is that they are gin charmed objects and she sells them and that's how she makes her living that's how she survives however magic and anything gin related is basically outlawed and so she is an outlaw in this time but the king kind of guy um, tells her that um, he will not arrest her or and will spare her life if 
she will recover a relic for him. And um, she has to go someplace that is extremely dangerous. And uh, there, Chelsea Abdullah does not pull punches. <laughs> she is very cutthroat about um, how she handles her characters. So um, Lilu's rescuer, the djinn that rescues her is much more than he appears to be. And um, the, the truth versus lies or deception in this book is a major theme, partly because there's magic and lies versus deception also means illusion versus real. And she needs to know these things and um, she doesn't always get that from the djinn. So um, again, themes of found family, themes of forgiveness and truth, like I said, friendship in unexpected ways, unexpected people, unexpected places. And um, like I said, just highly entertaining read. And I thought that it was, it was good. Um, I gave it a B plus and uh, 89%. And I would recommend it for anybody that's looking for a little bit of, a, of an Arabian Nights uh, story throughout. It was very evident in, in this book that it is based on the Arabian Nights. Um, and the last book that I have to tell you about right now is that I finished this last week is Children of the New Forest. And this is by Captain Frederick Marriott. And I give this a B, 83%. It is very much a, um, an old fashioned children's story. Um, my niece recommended this to me. And when I asked her why she liked it so much after I had finished reading it, I asked her, what was it about it that you liked so much? And she said, I just really like, um, uh, there's a little bit of intrigue in the story. And she said, so I really liked that. And then the other thing that I really liked, or and this is her telling me this, um, the other thing that I really liked was the way that the brothers and sisters treated each other and treated other people. And I thought, well, that is a great reason to like this book. So um, God, chivalry, honesty, um, perseverance, family, those are just accepted as the normal belief of everybody. Like this is the way that life just is. And maybe it was back in the 1600s. Um, that's when it t takes place, 1640 to 1650s, meh, in there. Um, it is at the time when, uh, oh, is it Cromwell? Is trying to overthrow King Char one of the King Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know which one. Um, anyway, set of four siblings who, because their parents are loyal to the king and not Oliver Cromwell, I think, I think that's who it is. Sorry, you guys. Um, they end up with no home and no parents, um, these four siblings. And they, they end up taking the surname of their uh, groundskeeper and living with him as um, nieces and nephews of his, I think. And he um, basically brings them up in a way that they are going to be able to sustain themselves and and become beautiful members of society. The plot plods at times. Um, it, it, it's 
got its little shortcomings. The characters are very easy to like, and there's a wonderful um, expression th through ca the captain's writing um, that really showcases that wonder that you have as a kid of just making it on your own. And, um, you know, and just that, that kind of pride that you have when you do something and you do it well, um, that's very much in there. There's a little mystery. There's a little um, intensity to things at different times. There's a little romance, if you can call it that. Um, yeah, it was it was a sweet story, and um, and it was about a time period that I didn't know a whole lot about. It's something that that um, children would appreciate and enjoy even today. Obviously, my niece did. So, okay, what am I in the middle of? I am in the middle of Kaikei. Um, this is by Vashnavi Patel, and it is uh, an African Indian inspired story and very much the story of a queen. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm probably about 70% of the way through that one. That's another one that came in from the library. Um, that was on hold that they were like, you've got seven days. <laughs> and I was like, done, I can do it. So I had to set aside um, Age of Assassins uh, so that I could quickly, quickly read those. And I just put an uh, extension on my uh, checkout for this one. So um, I haven't really touched this hardly since last week because I had both uh, Kaike and uh, and, uh, the star thief or stardust thief. And so I wanted to get those done because I wasn't going to have them very long. So, um, I have until the end of today <laughs> to finish Kai K and, um, I don't think that's going to be a problem. It has been, um, intense. It has been so good. I have, I, I have enjoyed it. It, it drugged just a little bit at one point, but um, it picked back up fairly quickly. And so, yeah, I am enjoying that one. Then I have Gerald Durrell's um, My Family and Other Animals. This is one of the ones up next. Um, really, really excited to get to this. And um, then remember when I was looking for a book called Rotten to the Core by T.E. Kinsey? And the one by Sheila Connolly came up and I read it and I was kind of disappointed. Um, look what came in. <laughs> so I just actually took my library books back today and um, picked this one up because it came in. So I'll be reading this one and really, really excited to do that. This is um, from the Lady Hardcastle series. Sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to put the library information up there. Um, yeah, so uh, this is from the series about Lady Hardcastle, and it the banter in this is what I love more than anything. The mysteries are so easy to figure out, but I just uh, really, really love the banter, and uh, it'll go quick. It'll be fast. Um, I don't know what I'll, I'll, I'll be continuing in my Dostoevsky stories. I'll be doing that. And I don't know what else is on the docket. So um, what have you guys been reading this week? And um, have you read any of the books that I read? And um, did you like any of them? Did you not like them? Just talk to me in the comments. I always enjoy interacting with you guys. And Thanks for watching Friday Reads, and I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful Father's Day, if you celebrate Father's Day. I think we're going to get together with our kids here in town, and uh, we just found out last night that 
the twins that are due this uh, fall are boys. Excited to have two more boys. Thanks for joining me today and like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to. I'll see you in the next video, everyone. Bye.